Do you ever get questions that look like this and know you're cooked? Constance questions show up at least three or four times every SAT without fail. If you want a perfect score, you have to know how to do these. In this video, I'm gonna go over my thought process on how I approach these problems so you never miss another Constance question again. So this question I got on screen here is very commonly asked in these constant type of questions. It's these quadratic constants where they put it in ax squared plus bx plus c form. And then we're given the roots and then we're asked to find a plus b. So I'm gonna give you some secret sauce. If you know this formula, you can pretty much do these kind of questions super easily. So what you have to know is that there's this formula that says if you add the two roots of the quadratic together, x1 and x2, those are the two roots, you can set them equal to negative b over a. So I would highly recommend jotting this down and memorizing it because it can really save you on some of these weird SAT questions. So anyways, we're gonna plug in seven and negative three for the roots. So that'll be seven plus negative three equals negative b over a. So then that tells us four is gonna equal negative b over a. I can solve for b, so that'll be, I multiply the a over, so that'll be four a equals negative b, or negative four a equals b, I divide by a negative one. So then now, I'll move over here. We wanna find a plus b, that's what the question's asking. It's asking us what values could be a plus b. So that now that we've written b in terms of negative four a, we can plug it in here and then simplify. So this will become a minus 4a when we plug it in, or negative 3a. And then the question is just asking if a is an integer greater than 1, which of the following could be? So what you should gather from this is that a plus b, which is what negative 3a ends up being, is it has to be a multiple of negative 3. And I'll just demonstrate. So if we plug in a equals 2, because it has to be greater than um, negative 3, or sorry, it has to be greater than one, that'll be negative three times two, which will equal negative six, and then negative three, and then you would just keep going, and so on. You, you guys see the pattern, right? But basically it's just gonna be A, because that's the first one, so that's pretty much how you would do it, but the, the answer to A plus B could theoretically be any multiple of negative three. All right, so in this problem, we're given a system of equations and we're asked to find for what constant k is there no real solutions, okay? So whenever you're given info like this, I always like to just set equal the givens you're given. So in this case, set y equal to y, so that'll be negative 2.5 equals x squared plus 8x plus k and then I would add the 2.5 over. The reason I'm doing that is because remember in quadratics, we always like to have it set equal to zero if possible. So zero is equal to x squared plus eight x plus k plus 2.5. And then what you need to know is that when a, when a quadratic has no real solutions, that means the discriminant is less than zero. So what that means is that the b squared minus four ac part is less than zero. And that comes from the quadratic formula that is known as the discriminant. So if you don't know that formula, I'd look it up because that's pretty important. So basically in this case, I'm gonna write it up here. A is gonna equal one, that comes from the x squared. B is gonna equal eight, the number in front of the x. And C is gonna equal k plus 2.5, okay? These two constants at the end getting added together. So now, if I plug this all in, this will be eight squared minus four times, um, four times one times K plus 2.5 is less than zero. So then now we just have to solve for K. We have everything we need. So 64 minus four times K plus 2.5 and then we're gonna just subtract the 64 over to the other side. So this will be negative 64, or let me rewrite that, negative four times K plus 2.5 is less than negative 64. Divide by negative four on both sides, so that'll be K plus 2.5 is greater than 16. Whenever you divide by a negative number in an inequality, you have to flip the sign, so don't forget about that. 
and then we just subtract the 2.5 over to the other side. So k has to be greater than 13.5. But we're not done. The question asks for k and tells us it's a positive integer constant. And we're asked to find the least possible value of k. So basically, we just have to find, we just have to go like round up from 13.5. So the answer is going to be k equals 14 because that is the smallest possible integer k could be because k could be 15 16 17 etc but 14 is the lowest we can go so that is our answer try number 24 here this one's really similar to the last one we worked out and this will get you some good reps on these kind of problems so by now you should start to realize that there's a pattern with these constant questions they really like these quadratic questions okay this is a quadratic question because it's dealing with factors and you know you can tell the answers are in like quadratic form so it's a quadratic question. So be on the lookout for these. So anyways, this question is asking for an expression that could be one that has the factor x plus 2b. So what I would do is I'm going to look at this and go, okay, so it needs to have a factor of x plus 2b, and it needs to have a, the last term be 14b. So if you're familiar with like how to build out like a factored quadratic, you should know that that means the last term is going to need to be a 7. And then since we have this 3 in front, we're going to need to have a 3x multiplying the x to get 3x squared. So when I write that out, I'm going to have x plus 2b times 3x plus 7. And the way I knew how to do that, if you don't understand what I was talking about, is when you FOIL this, so when you do first, outer, inner, last, you know you're going to have to multiply x by 3x to get the 3x squared part. That's how I knew to get this. And then we know we have 14b, so we had to, we're going to multiply 2b times 7 at the end. So let me multiply this out now. So then we're going to get 3x squared plus 7x plus 6xb plus 14b. Okay. And then what we can do here in the middle is we can factor out an x because they both have an x in common. So then this is 3x squared plus x times 7 plus 6b plus 14b okay so now we're almost done you have to pretty much just put it into this form you have to see which one lines up with this and we're told that b is a positive integer so basically if you see here we have 3x squared plus x times some number plus 14b so it's almost in this form we just have to figure out which of these numbers in the middle lines up with this? So which one has an integer b? So what you have to do basically is set all of them equal to 7 plus 6b. And then you have to figure out when you solve them, which one has the integer. So let me just write that all out. That's going to be all these equations. And... I'm going to save you some time. It's basically going to be this one. So if I solve this equation for 49, I'm going to get that b equals 7. So that's the only one that has an integer b. So that is going to be d, our answer. So we're going to do a geometry one. This one deals with an equilateral triangle that has a height of k square root of 3 centimeters and a perimeter of 600 24 centimeters. So that k square root of 3 part and equilateral triangle, you see those two things together, you should start to kind of make the connection that this is going to be one of those trig 30, 60, 90 special right triangles, and you should be able to get it pretty easily. So if you haven't made that connection yet, I'm going to show how I realize that. So this is an equilateral triangle. What we have to do is let's draw it out. All the sides are going to be the same. They're going to be 208 because we divide 624 by 3. So this will be 208, 208, and 208. And we're told that the triangle has a height of k square root of 3, and we're asked to find k. So we know that it's equilateral, so all the angles are going to be 60. So this will be 60, this will be 30, and this is 90, obviously. So... Let's um, redraw the triangle, the smaller one, because we're splitting it in half. So basically, we have 104 because we split it in half. 
208 and then k root 3 and then this is 60 degrees and this is 30. So you should recognize now that this is a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. They give you this formula on the formula sheet in the beginning actually so you don't even need to memorize this but basically k is just going to equal this number over here in this case so k is just going to equal 104. It's really that simple. All right, that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, I have another video on how to answer constants questions easier with Desmos. So check that out and be sure to subscribe.